We need to talk. 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 Welcome back to WTT TV. I'm your host, Mr. KOA, alongside Top Boy. And it's been a weird week for me because mm. I was in hot weather 24 hours ago, and now there's this dirty stuff on the ground, and it's this weird weather that's we never really prepare for, even though we know it happens every year. You know what, though? We just skipped fall this year. Yeah, we, we really did. did. We Mother Nature really, like, was like, I'm not going to let you guys have fall. We're just going to. It's gonna bypass that. Like I don't remember like really leaves falling much. It just kind of. I'm pretty sure there's still leaves on some of the trees. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like, it's still there. The whole point of fall is for the leaves to fall. Yeah. But yeah, no, I was in LA for a week. Um, it was it was fun. That was always a good time. Every time you go to LA, do you ever feel like bits of you like I should live here, but then you're like, but I don't know. Do you ever have that feeling? Yeah, like I, it's like this weird like, yo, I, I should move to LA, and then you're like. I was, I, having a, I was having a conversation <laughs> last time I was there with, uh, you know, my girlfriend and her, her parents. And it's like, I could see myself living in L.A. Um, for two reasons. One, just because, like, I know I can drive. Mm-hmm. So you can't live in L.A. if you without don't a have car. a car. Without no. a car, it's just... I'm sure what a lot of people who don't have a car do is they just stick to their one area. Mm-hmm. Or they Uber everywhere, which right. is crazy expensive. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. There's parts of LA I would live in, and there's other parts where I'm just like, I don't. Yeah. I don't care for it. Where would you live in? I probably live in like the Burbank. I live in Burbank, Santa Monica, mm. or like downtown LA. Downtown LA is doable. It's expensive. Yeah. My cousin lives there. It's very expensive. Um, yeah. West Hollywood, I don't mind. Oh yeah, that's we where have, I was yeah, staying. Every yeah. time I go, I stay in West Hollywood. Yeah, West Hollywood. It's nice. West Hollywood it, is like kind of like near the Burbank area too. Yeah, yeah. like it, like I was this time I went, I was staying like near UCLA. Um, it's quiet, it's mm. quaint. Like you're you're far enough away that it's not loud. Yeah. But you're close enough to get into inner city, inner yeah. city Venice beaches, whatever you, if you need to. Yeah. Kind of like a Mississauga, to yeah. be honest. Mm. It's like. Do you need to live downtown to get there? Like, nah, it's 20 minutes away, whatever, if I want to go. Yeah. If I want to go to the beach, it's 15 minutes away. Like, I don't need to stay in the beach or stay downtown to get you, to these places. Yeah, you, you know what's weird? As bad as, uh, okay, the only time I experienced really, really bad traffic in L.A. Mm-hmm. was when we were going to the, back to the airport to leave. Mm. It was awful. Yeah. Because like, their airport is a mess. It's like the worst airport I've ever it's been so to. It's so old. It's old. <laughs> they just changed their rules where, like, Oh, the Uber shares, rules. Yeah. Like Ubers and Lyfts can't pick you up yeah, from yeah. anymore. They gotta go to a separate terminal. It's just a this is a mess. But I got I got used to it very quickly where, you know, I was driving out there, I put in the directions of somewhere I need to go on the maps, and the entire route would just be red. Mm. <laughs> yeah, solid. It'd just be a solid red, because <laughs> yeah. they're like, it's gonna take you 30 minutes to yeah. get here, but it's gonna be slow the entire yeah. time. Right? So I don't know. That's the one thing I just didn't like. Yeah. I hated the traffic, all the other stuff, but the weather's blessed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Honestly, it's one of those things, like, the weather kind of distracts you from, like, all the other issues, like the homelessness and yeah. the dirtiness. And, like, this is terrible. Dude. But, like, it's really bad. But, like, then you realize you're like, but if every day was like this, mm. like, my mood would just be up. Yeah, if you're... Like, your mood's if up. You're, like, if you're summer, living in an area where the weather is nice... You're le- like, what do you have to be angry about for no reason? Even the homeless people are, are happy. Yeah. I'm, like, che- I'm like, cheese. I'm a lot more likely to be upset this time of the year just because of the cold weather. Yeah. If I'm homeless, at least make me homeless in L.A. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> at least. It's like, uh, what was I going to say? Remember when you were growing up and you used to hear about snowbirds? Yeah. Snowbirds, people that just fly out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, be, they don't stay for winter. I want to be a snowbird within the next five years. Yeah. Where you're capable of, like, I have a place to go. I'm like, see you guys. <laughs> you walk outside, you're like, <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> as soon as I see the first <laughs> little piece of snow just touch packing. the ground, it's like, all right, we got to go. <laughs> We're out of here. Oh, man. Anyway, let's get to some of these questions. Uh, we have some from the leftover weeks that we didn't get a chance to answer. First one, is it actually a good thing if your partner is also your best mate, like best friend. I think so. I think yeah. it's actually a mandatory thing you think so? as you get older. Hmm. I feel like when you're younger, 
opinion, obviously, but I feel like when you're younger, you're the importance on friendship isn't as strong. Mm. Like when you're when you're a kid, you're like, you know, as long as I like you, as long as you're pretty, yeah, we can have fun, we can party, whatever. Like, yeah, I have my boys for that. Like my boys are my boys. They'll be my friends. They'll hold it down. Like if I need laughter or jokes. But as you get older, and you rely more on conversation yeah. rather than the looks, you rely more on, you know, challenging conversation, challenging you know, communication or like mm. problem solving, like life skills that you actually care about more, then you're looking for somewhere you're like, more than your relationship side, it's like, I have to actually like you. Yeah. Because like- I'm spending a lot of time with you. I'm spending a lot of time yeah. with you, more than my boys now, mm. right? Cause yeah. like when you're younger, you're chilling, you're, you see your girl here and there, you show your boys all the time, going yeah. parties, going clubbing, you see your girl when you can. Mm. When you get older, it kind of reverses and now you see your boys when you can. Oh, it's definitely right? reverse. Like, <laughs> right? So it's yeah. like, if I'm seeing my boys when I can, I'd rather like you a lot. Yeah. Like, because you're taking up time that I now used to have with my boys, yeah. where I would tell certain jokes to, now it has to go through you. Yeah. Because I don't have a chance to talk to them. You better get these jokes. Yeah. You better have my humor. <laughs> you better like my shows. Yeah. Like, the things that your boys used to have, now you kind of need out of your partner mm -hmm. as you get older. So I think it's definitely important to... You know, they, they might not have to be your best friend. I feel personally, I, I feel like you should have a best friend in different ways. Yeah. Like you should still have your best friend that whether, whether you're in a relationship or not, this is your guy or a girl. Yeah. You know, like breakups, relationships, that doesn't change mm. the best friend. Yeah. Because they see it all. Yeah. But I feel like you should have a best friend within your partner in the sense where it's like, yeah, I'm not comparing you to my best friend of 20 years. Mm. It's not a comparison. Yeah. But what I have in you, I shouldn't have with anybody else. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's kind of like, a funny and weird dynamic when you think about it because, you know, imagine you, whether you're, you have a best friend that you've known for, let's just say a decade, mm. right? 10 years. And you meet someone who you now start dating they become, you know, your lover. You spend all this time with them. And at a certain point, they're not like your current best friend. Current best friend. Right. They don't overtake this person mm -hmm. you've known for a decade, but there's this weird dynamic where if things progress further, it's now, you know, this person that I'm now like married to or I'm dating is more, it's almost more important to me in certain regard mm -hmm. than like this person I've known for a decade, you know, but it's just, it's just something we kind of accept. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Because, Are they, but do they actually become more important to you? Well, I'll say, I'll or say Or do like they this. just take priority? Yeah, but I almost, I almost think those two things are a little bit synonymous. Okay. Because um, when it comes to making certain decisions, I'm not thinking about like, yo, best my, what's my boy going to say? I'm not really thinking about that. But if I have a partner, then I'm starting to think about, okay, well, I have to really take into consideration what they're doing. Whereas before, I would go to my boys as more so like a counsel situation. It's like, For, I like felt affirmation. Like, it's like, fellas, like, what do you yeah. think about, like... I'm I just need to, to confirm what I'm already about to do. <laughs> what I'm about to do. Whereas <laughs> when you're partner, it's more so, I need you to let me know... <laughs> if I could do this. If I should even do this. Mm. It's interesting you think of it that way, right? Because you go but to your we'll, boys and you say, I'm about to do this regardless. I just need you to let me know. If I'm how bad can this get? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> okay, well, the thing is, okay. So, yes, I agree. I feel like, though, um, with your partner, you, you start making decisions. You start making group decisions. Yes. Whether you want to or not, they become group decisions. Right, you you're, you're never really making group decisions with your best friend. They're mm. more, they're more your conscience. They're more your advisor. Yeah, and they're more your support cast. Yeah, if you, even if you mess up, I I'm gonna be there regardless. You messing up doesn't really affect my life. Like I'm your boy or I'm your yeah. girl. That's doesn't, true. Doesn't really like, doesn't really hurt my life. I'll yeah. I get mad at you and be like, yo, you shouldn't have done that. Like yeah. for you, yeah. you shouldn't. Have, like, yeah. You shouldn't. As have long done as that. it doesn't affect my yeah, life. Like, like, I'm gonna ride with you still. You right? Know what I mean? So it's like yeah. your best friend has that limitation where it's like your decisions don't really affect me. It mm. more like I might be disappointed in you as yeah. a friend. I'm like, ah, you should have done that. Based on how I know you, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. But you're not affecting my life, my day to day. Now mm. we have a partner, it's like you doing this embarrasses me. 
mm. makes me sad, yeah. makes me happy, mm. makes people think of, like, all your decisions are now impacting this person. So they're yeah. kind of like, kind of run this by me because I don't know how this is going to affect me yet. Yeah. But just so you know, it will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, That's a very you know? good point. That's a very good point. So then, like, piggybacking off of that, the next question she asked was, do you think best friends make good lovers? So if you become... Hmm. See, this is an interesting Wait, question. Wait, sorry. Best friends, or oh, turning them into lovers. Yeah, we we, we'll tackle this in two different mm. ways, right? So one, you are best friends with a woman, known her forever, mm -hmm. right? And then for me, I'm kind of, that kind of scares me. The idea of that scares me. Of knowing someone forever? Knowing someone for a long time as friends. And oh, nothing happening yet. Nothing's ever happened. Yeah, and yeah. then exploring that. That actually kind of scares it's, me. It's the point of no return. Because you... Uh, there's no going back. Yeah, you know there's and no going back. It's, it's so rare nowadays to sleep with someone and just be, like, normal after that. <laughs> just be okay. Yeah, it's either you know have to mean? cut you off completely or have to be something. It's either you sleep yeah. with someone once and it's just like, oh, this, is, this is, didn't really work out between us. Yeah. But you know what? It's cool. We'll talk. It's either that or you sleep with someone and someone really enjoyed it more than the other. Mm. There's some type of feeling there that's attached, but it's hard to do that and just it not mean anything. See, okay, question. Have you actually experienced something like this where you had a best friend and then tried something? I have. Where I've had a best friend and slept with them? Yeah. I've like never you had, you had a best friend, never, nothing's ever happened. No, no, no. And then I, one day you tried something. I'm trying to think. I'm honestly trying to think. My best, like, female friends I've ever had, I've never, I definitely never slept with any of them. I've never, like, made out. Like, I've never done anything like that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that, like, when I was younger, there might have been a time where it's, like, one of us, like, kissed. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, nothing serious, mm -hmm. you know? But I just, <laughs> I've, never, I've never gone to that extent because I have, like, for me, I'm way too, I'm way too scared in those situations. Mm. I'm just like, even if I thought I was scared. This, I'm like, even if I think this could be something, like, yeah. we connect on all these levels, like, it might work out. Mm. I'm just like, I don't know if I want to ruin this. Because the other, the other thing, too, is That's a good when you're best friends with a woman... From a guy perspective, right? And you know what? It works both ways. Because I think girls will agree with this. Is that you end up knowing way too much about them mm. before you guys are even in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So for... In like my there's, no, there's no filter like the normal progression exactly. of dating. So in, like, in my case, right? I have, you know, I have a lot of uh, female friends that I'm tight with. And over time, like, they just, they just start telling you everything. Yeah. Like, they're like, you're never looking at me that way. It's yeah, like, you're not going to look at me that way. So the same, like, I end up realizing, like, yo, some of these girls are just as bad as, like, we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and they would never really tell you that if they're trying to pursue you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A part of me is like, you wouldn't be telling yeah. me this if you're not trying to pursue me. No, but if you are. If you, if you are trying to pursue yeah. me. But then you get this weird, conflicting feeling where it's like, wait a minute, do I like you? But now I know all this about you. Yeah. Should I even like you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or do, so, but do I like you more because you're so open? I know. But like, would you be I telling know. me this if you were? Exactly. It's a right? weird. It's a weird thing. Maybe yeah, I yeah. sound crazy saying this, but that's just my mindset. Where I'm like, I couldn't. Yeah. I've had a hard time. Like, what do you? What do you think? So I, I have done that. Yeah. Right. I was scared for years. Like, there's mm. a girl that I know since like we were in grade nine yeah right so 14 years old first met been friends mm. i'll call it friends because no one really knows whoever if no one ever pursues anything then you keep it as friends yeah you might not know what someone think in the back of their head mm. but we for what we've known we've been friends we tell each other stuff we have fun we go out we leave never nothing's ever happened never romantic nothing and then one day like you know what's crazy <laughs> the things that happen is always like Something so extreme, mm. like that, causes you guys to break that wall. Like it's never like <laughs> it's never like a randomly like we should kiss. Like just mm. normal. Like no, 
her house flooded. Like, mm. okay. And I'm like, oh, it's normal. Yeah. Like, call your friend. Like, you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah, so she flooded her apartment one day. Like, we know each other now for, like, you know, at least eight years now, right? One day her house floods. And I'm like, she calls me. She's like, oh, my God, like, my apartment's flooded. I, I left, you know, the dishwasher running overnight or something. And just kind of mm. went off. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, she's like, can you come help? Like, I'm just panicking and, like, stuff on the floor. I'm just like, yeah, I got you. No way. Mm. And I'm like, all right, cool. But, like, in my mind, I'm literally like, yeah, like, I'm going to come help my friend, mm. right? In her mind, which I didn't know until later, was if there's anyone I can think of calling right now I can rely on, it's this guy. It's this guy. Right? Yeah. Which is also because I, I'm her friend, but mm. also sometimes women add an emotional attachment to that where it's like you look for that type of trait in a mm. partner. Like, it's very rare to find someone where like, no matter what is going on, if I call this girl or call this guy, be down for me like you actually yeah. like that trait in a partner yeah as well right yeah, i feel what you're saying so i think she kind of mixed for the first time or i don't know if it was the first time but the first time i was aware of it mm. i think she mixed like do i like this guy like uh, is that why i'm calling him or is i calling him because he's my best friend or is it both right yeah so i get there she's on the cr- on the ground crying whatever i help <laughs> mop stuff up for her and then i'm like calm down hug her i'm like relax we're good we're good she's like right, cool i'm like you good now like, still in my mind, I'm like, yeah. I'm about to head back, like, you know? And yeah. she's like, could you stay? Like, I'm a little shaken up, whatever. I'm like, mm. mind you, I've never, I've never stayed over her house, ever, yeah. Yeah. ever in my life. Yeah, so you know like, for a long time. I know for a long time, so I'm like, stay. I'm like, mm. like, like, sleep here? Mm. She's like, yeah, like, if you, if you don't mind, like, I'm like, and in my moment, in my, at that moment, I'm just like, you should leave. <laughs> like, yeah. you should leave. Not because anything's wrong with it, but I'm like, this is, just seems like the right thing to do. Yeah. Didn't leave. Mm. Stayed. Ended up kissing her later that night, like late at night. And when it happened, I literally stopped her. And I looked at her and I'm like, you know what? Like, you know you can't do this, right? Yeah. And she's like, why? So I'm like, <laughs> like, there's a part of me that's like, if this... Cause I know it's about to happen. You know you're laying in bed together. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what it's You know it's like. about to happen. So yeah. I'm like, you know, if we do, do what we're thi- both thinking yeah. might happen right now, mm. everything's done, right? Yeah. And she's like, why? No, no, like, everything's done. Whatever friendship, funny joke, like, because now, you, now you're going to start to like me. And I may like you, whatever, but like, mm. there's never going back. You can never go back to holding hands. Yeah. Right? Like, there's a saying, like, you just ne- once you kiss or make out with whatever, you can never go back to just holding hands, mm. right? And after that happened, um, she's like, no, like, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, I'd yeah. rather take that risk. Mm. And stupid me as a guy, I was like, oh, man. All right, like, if mm. you're sure. And lo and behold, she hated me. Literally, like, a week after. Yeah. Right? Because now in her mind, it's like, why aren't you calling or checking? Like, I'm like, whoa, whoa you never... We never did that, but now her expectation is different, mm. right? Because the emotions came out, something that was never a thing before. And now to me, I'm like, I'm not responding in the way she might have expected yeah. it to turn out, which turns into anger. And it ruined our friendship, which I was very upset about because I'm just like, you, when you, sometimes you know certain things are going to happen, you still do anyways. Because you think it might play out It might, but then you're like, yeah. but you kind of knew. The problem is... And I don't know if people will agree with this, but I think, as vulgar as this sounds, once you, like, have sex, once you enter someone, like... <laughs> it's never the same. It's never the same. Because if you really think about, it, like, yes, the act of having sex can just be... Sometimes... Just it physical. Ju- yeah. It can just be an act. Right. Right? But when you really break it down, it's like... You're, you're joining. <laughs> yeah, like, like you're, you're doing something that is very, for lack of a better word, it's intimate. Right. Right? So we talked about it before. In order for, a, like, I always think about it from a woman's perspective when it comes to having sex, right? Like, I've never, I can truthfully say, like, yes, there have been women I've been, like, I've wanted to, like, hook up with and stuff like that. And it's usually happened, but it's never been, like, I need, when I go out, I need to 
sleep with someone tonight. Yeah, like, yeah. I've never had that mentality. Like motive. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've never yeah, yeah. had the motive to do those types of things. And I've, it's weird to me when I'm around other men and I see that happen because I'm like, is this not a regular occurrence? Like, is there something going on? Yeah. But the reason I think about it from a woman's perspective is because it's like, that woman is allow <laughs> it's allowing me to, like, literally enter her space. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a crazy thing when you think about it. Yeah. So when I think of it from that perspective, it's like, okay, if, it's a, if, if I don't know you on that level, it's a lot easier for me to cross that threshold. Right. right. But if I know you know you, it's like, okay. <laughs> Once this happens... We can never pretend like we did. We dip. can't pretend <laughs> like it never happened. No. You know, you're never going to be able to look at me. You're not going to be able to look at me and say, yo, especially if you hate me afterwards and say, yo, I can't believe I let you have sex with me. No. You know what I mean? You're going to look at me in such a way where it's like, wow, I can't believe this guy. Yeah. If I don't want to date you. But it's, guys don't think like that. Yeah. I've never heard of a guy say, I can't believe I let this girl have sex with me. You know what I mean? Like, she doesn't want to be with me. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that doesn't happen with men. It's true. Because the dynamic, it, it speaks to like a larger, a larger issue as well. Where I actually want to bring this up. Um, are you familiar with uh, the two black guys in Montreal, Abba and Preach? No. They're, they're, they're dope. They do like a, a similar kind of uh, talk style to what we okay. do. They don't have a show. They've been doing a podcast okay. on YouTube for years. And they had a video that went viral not too long ago because Rihanna, I don't know how many months ago or weeks ago this was, but Rihanna had posted something on her IG. It was a meme. Yeah. Right? And it said, if you cry when your ex dies, now you single. Right? Whoa. And like, I th- <laughs> she didn't, I think she just posted like it. She's trying to be funny. Trying to be funny. Yeah. She, she didn't create it. She yeah, just yeah, posted yeah, yeah. it. And then... I don't know what show it was. I don't think it was The View. It was like another one of those talk shows. It has the girl on it from, uh, oh my God. There was like, her name's Aubrey or something. Like she was a, in a singing group. I'm not sure. Not the Pussycat Dolls. She was in another one of those groups. But okay. basically, all the women, they had, it was all the women on the show and their husbands were there. And all the women were just basically saying like, yeah, I agree with, like I would feel some type of way if my man... All of a sudden, starts crying like uncontrollably because his ex died. It made me feel like he still has feelings for it. And then okay. another woman was, "I see your face, That's right?" A human being. I, <laughs> no, woman, it's not good. This other woman it's was. Like, just... This other woman said, <laughs> "Yeah, listen. In my entire life that I've been date, I've been married to my husband. He, the husband's right there, not saying anything, right? None of the men are saying anything. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, the woman said, because they're all thinking that one ex that would make them cry. Yeah. The, <laughs> like, wo- the, the woman's like." I've been married to my husband for like 10 years. I've only ever seen him cry twice. And it was when his father passed away. Right. And it was on the day of our wedding. And everyone was like, ah. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, shut up. He probably cries <laughs> and you never see it. He probably hides it from you. Just right? the only time you've seen it. The only time you've seen it. Yeah. And I'm listening to all these people talking about it. And I'm like, yo. Am I like a monster or something? Yeah. Am I crazy? Because I think, okay, it's been a long time since I've been in a long relationship right. with, with someone, right? So granted, I think, I think if you cry after your ex passes away, I think it's normal because it's a human being that just passed away. But I also look, I'll, I'll give them this. I right. think it's literally based on the type of relationship you have with your ex. I agree. Right? So... It's not like, just because you're ex. Just because she's your just ex. Just because your ex no. died, right? Like... Because there are exes that, God forbid, they pass. I'm going to feel I'd, sad, I'd, but I'd I'm like, not going to cry. Wow. I'd be like, damn. I'd be like, damn, that sucks. I know it sounds real hard. Yeah, no, but... I mean, like, you have, it's basically... You, crying is a response and emotion of a connection you had yeah. with a person or a family member, right? So yeah. if you didn't have a connection and you don't feel the way, the same way, like, when celebrities die... Mm. You like them, you like their music, but you're not yeah. crying yeah. because you're like, I, I wasn't connected to them in an emotional way that exactly. I feel like I lost, exactly. right? You could break up with somebody because it's not right for you and it didn't benefit your relationship or your, your life or whatever, but you still had a connection at that time that mm. still lives bigger than your relationship with that person. Yeah. That if you lose them, you're still going to be like, shoot, like, 
like that it still hurts because you now you're remembering some great moments you had but there's nothing if there's nothing great about the relationship hmm. and there was nothing positive they brought to your life then why are you crying like, exactly yeah so what did they do that went viral so they because they, they were just reacting to oh, okay, it okay. like what the heck are these people yeah, talking yeah. about but then I was like I went down the YouTube rap hole the videos and he had another one of them had a, a conversation where he spoke to many different men and women including uh, Shan right uh, Budri yeah Budri yeah um, the topic was basically saying this do we really want men to be more emotional emotional or vulnerable mm. and she was asking this no he was asking okay, this okay. to different people right. right and it was very interesting because he was saying you know especially as how times are changing now we want men to be more open right, right? and I do agree with the statement of wanting men to, you know, be able to express their feelings a bit more. But what was interesting was he was saying, when we're expressing our feelings, are the people we're expressing them to actually equipped to deal with those things? Because he was saying, and he asked a lot of men, and he asked a lot of women, this question, a lot of men said that, you know, there have been times where when I opened up or expressed my, my feelings, it was like used against me at some point. Mm. Right? Ammo. Right? It's like ammo. It's like, you know, I I might I might have like cried in a situation from my girl and then it's like used against me later on. Some women were saying that when they were younger, they would look at men who were more emotional or able to express their feelings more as weak mm -hmm. because of like the patriarchy right, and right, how it's set up. So it's it's like super, super interesting when you really think about it that way. And I just want to get, like, your opinion on what you think of that because I do think that men should be more, you know, emotionally available or open to discuss their emotions. Mm -hmm. But I do think to a certain extent that a lot of women, I do, I think women want us to be more open because historically speaking we're not and it can cause problems in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But the more I think about it, I don't think most women are actually equipped to like... Like really want that, actually. Really want it because they're not able to deal with it when we, when we tell them. Right. You know what I mean? Because the problem is, you know... They're not used to dealing with it. They, they want it, but if yeah. it happens, they're not, they don't, they've never had to deal with it. Yeah. So they're like, oh, wow, like he's, he's actually crying. It's, <laughs> it, it's like a yeah. super complicated situation I because I think we talked about before where, you know... Guys, the thing is, <laughs> when we say guys aren't emotionally available or we're not open, the reality is we actually are. It just shows up in different ways. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I know for a fact that you probably have spoken to your close boys, like your cousin, or like, you know, I can name a few off yeah, the top yeah. of my head who I think. You probably like had some real conversations about some, some emotional stuff, right? But it probably took some time for you to get there with your boys, mm -hmm. right? When it comes to dating women from a guy perspective, I think that what usually ends up happening is for a lot of men that aren't talking to their boys, they end up telling everything to their girl, right? At some point in the relationship mm -hmm. where they're like, you know what, I'm close with this woman. I can tell them a lot of things yeah. because we're close. Right. But now the problem is, from a, the guy's perspective, he's become dependent on this woman to basically become like their emotional support system. Hmm. So when they break up, or if they break up, that guy is now emotionally crippled. Right. Because he doesn't have that support system. I agree. So it's yeah. important for it to be balanced. You know what I mean? But now the problem with being like that woman being the emotional support system is. She uses it against him. She can use oh. it against him, but she's also, she's not fully equipped to deal with this. Because yeah, she's, yeah. like, a, no one in a relationship is supposed to be, like, the psychiatrist. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what yeah. usually ends up happening. How many times you've been in a relationship and a woman is telling you all their problems and you're there for them because you're like, I'm supposed this to be here. My role, But at some point, it gets a little overwhelming. Right. Right? And it's probably the same feeling the woman is getting. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's, it's a weird dynamic. Well, because, okay, even... Even that, like, we don't, we, our, our, our energies bounce off of each other, right? So positive, yeah. 
breeds positive, negative breeds negative. So mm. there is a line where it's like, I want you to open up to me, you know, when you're sad or, or emotional about something. Yeah. But there's also a threshold where if it becomes too much, now you've affected that person's mood. Yeah. Right? Yes. Even okay. like even though they're available for you, constant negativity and sadness will breed sadness. Yeah. Right? So like it's hard for me, especially if you're having a positive day, mm. your day could be could have been great. And if me as your girlfriend comes to you and then lays out like sad stuff about my life, mm. my life, you almost feel guilty expressing your positivity yeah right like mm. like you may have came to you may have entered today with a mentality before you met your girlfriend today that like i want to tell her all this great stuff mm. you know that's happening in my life mm. right some good stuff are happening in my life but she gets to you first with an emotional side and some negative stuff that are happening in her life and some very deep stuff that are happening in her life now you have to put your excitement and happiness on hold mm. to make yourself available to you know, take in the stuff from her, hmm. and then you also have to suppress it because you're like, I don't know if me telling her how good my life is right now yeah. fits this moment. Yeah. I right? And if it happens enough, you just get used to suppressing that entirely. Hmm. Right? Yeah. And then, like you were saying, you become the psychiatrist. Like, no, like, when people are sad, no, like no, they don't want to hear how great someone else's life is. They mm. they kind of want you to be there for them. Yeah. But if you, if it's something that's so constant, you now just can you now just permanently suppress your happy stuff and become this like draining sponge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in terms of like men being more emotional or being more available, I feel like you know we've been raised to be the strong ones and to you know hold things in and be brave and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I do believe that you know we should share certain things with our female partners in terms of like how we feel or our emotions or our opinions regarding certain things. But I do believe we should have a secondary outlet that is not our partner. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I'm not, not even talking about gender roles, but I feel like, you know, men still need to be, you know, somewhat of a leading figure in relationships yeah. where it's like, you know, women are obviously very strong, but women still look to us to lead in certain aspects, mm. right? They look to us to take control in certain aspects and to, you know, be a protector in certain aspects as well. Um, so I feel like if, if, we're, if we're, you know, emptying too much into them, it might in some ways, you know, make it difficult for them to view us in that way. If that makes sense. Yeah, like I not to say we can't be yeah. emotional or cry. It's not even about crying. Mm. It's just about if you're if you're if you're pouring so much into her mm. emotionally where it's you know almost could be overwhelming, it's hard for her to look at you as a very, you know, strong protective figure for her. Yeah. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's, like it's it's a it's a weird thing to balance because like, yeah, no one's saying you can't no one's saying that being emotional or pouring makes you soft. Mm. It's just there's a balance of where you need, you need to divert some of that to either your parents or friends or your boy or whatever. But if you put so much into your partner, it, it almost sabotages your relationship in a sense. Like, yeah, well, I definitely agree with when you said, you know, I think it's important to have multiple outlets for this kind of thing. So it could be, you know having a hobby, playing sports, talk. I think the most important thing is being able to talk to someone else about whatever issues or problems you may be having outside of just your partner mm -hmm. for the reason, everything you just said, because you're right. Like, I do agree with the fact that if you go to your partner with everything, I think, honestly, you're just, you're setting yourself up for failure, which sound, it sounds like a weird statement to say mm -hmm. when I say, like, don't go to your partner with everything. Yeah. Like, but it's I, the real. Honestly, I think, you really can't. I, you I can't think, tell your partner yeah, everything. It's I think you should. I yeah. think you should tell your partner all the critical things that are pertinent to your relationship, right? right? Especially if it's going to affect the both of you, right? But the moment you go to your partner and starts, like, they're the person that you tell every single thing that is like bothering you on your mind and. Some people, it works for some people in a relationship. I'm not going to lie and say it doesn't, but the reason I think it's not the best approach is because 
just God forbid anything happens, like what do you what do you do? Like how do you navigate your emotional like system mm -hmm. afterwards if something happens, right? And I think one of the like most unbelievable things I ever heard, and it came from the same dude, Abba, he said, the way men treat their emotional sanctity is the same way that women treat their sexual sanctity. So what he's saying is that, you know, when someone says to a guy in a relationship, like, I, I want you to be more open, like, I need you to be more open, all this type of stuff, some men will respond to that and are okay with just, you know, opening up. For the most part, a lot of men don't because one, it's not something that we were taught our entire lives, but we won't do it until we're truthfully really comfortable. Like, we're like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm ready to do this, so now I can you can tell up. me. You can tell me all you want. You can tell me all you want, but until I am ready to do this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that it's very Same with similar. Same like, women's not going to have sex until exactly. she's really, he, like... Right? Because what happens is, if you force a woman to open up sexually before she's ready, afterwards there's going to be a feeling of resentment, mm -hmm. and she's going she's gonna to feel like she basically got pimped out, mm -hmm. right? Which is a totally valid feeling. And I, when you put it that way, I don't think it's any different hmm. for the emotional feeling. I don't think a lot of guys will classify it that way, but I think that's what's really going on. I don't want to, I don't want to have to open up about how I'm feeling until I'm ready to do it. Because if I'm not, I'm going to feel like I'm doing it just because you asked. And then it's not truthfully Just because you want to know. You know, it's almost no different than me when it comes to like having fun. Mm. I like having fun when I'm having fun, not mm. when I'm being told to have fun. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Go out there and have fun. It's like, no, I have fun when I'm ready to have fun. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, th I think that's an interesting point. You know, the way we treat our emotional sanctity mm. versus how women treat their sexual sanctity. It's a pretty think, accurate comparison. I think it's a very accurate comparison. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Like, and I see it. I, I definitely see it, especially when it's structured that way, because, you know, <laughs> there's very few things that men, there's very few things that men won't do, mm. like will literally will not do until they're comfortable. Those things yeah. literally are like opening up with somebody about their emotions, yeah. crying in front of somebody, mm. um, you know, even we could even, I could even say like talking about their sexuality. Yeah. Like it's there's like there's three like really big topics and clouds around those things that come with judgments. Yeah. Right? And I feel like men and women as well, but men mostly run from judgmental situations. Because they're trying, like, we have this innate, you know, desire to seem stronger or more, or seem stronger or, or bigger than we are. Yeah. And right? I, like, yeah. And I, piggybacking off that point, it's because it goes back to how the whole patriarchy works, right? I think, I think there are parts of this whole patriarchal system that work are needed for certain scenarios, right? But where it becomes problematic is when, you know, I know for a fact that some, at some point in my life, I've definitely thought, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna say this or do this because I don't want to appear like a weaker dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, like, yeah, I know. Which is, which is kind of a crazy feeling because mm -hmm. I'm not, we're not living in a society where it's like, I have to become the alpha, and if I don't, I'm going to die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, don't, we don't live in those times anymore. Yeah. But certain aspects of it still exist. You know what I mean? Imagine, think about when you go back to being middle school, like high school. There are systems set in place that let you know who is, like, who's at the top, who's at the bottom. Yeah. If you're an athlete and you're great, you're closer to the top yeah, yeah. than you are at the bottom, right? right? But 
once you're an but athlete... But everyone knows what's going on. Exactly. And then once you're... If you're in that realm, for example, let's say you're an athlete at the top or you're incredibly smart and you're at the top, you're still not allowed... You feel like you're not allowed to say, you know what? I'm just not feeling that great today. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm feeling kind of sad. You know what I mean? Like, because you know, based on that system, if I say this, it's going to look like I'm weak. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, when and I, I may lose my position. Exactly. Whatever that position is. It's foolish, right? And <laughs> yeah. when, you, when I heard some of these women saying things like, you know, when I was younger, I would, I would look at some men saying these things as if they're weak. Mm. But then now they're older and it's like, man, I, I, I want my man to be like this yeah, because yeah. I don't want it to be a problem in the future. Right. So it's a super, I thought it was just a super, super interesting topic to hear. Because I think it's something that everyone deals with in some regard. Thank you know what I mean? Definitely. I think, I think, bottom line for me, I think, it's, I think it's very important that people are able to share the, how they're feeling and their emotions when they're comfortable, not when they're being told to. But I think one of the biggest takeaways from our conversation is that I, I truthfully do believe that you need to be able to have these conversations with not just your partner, mm-hmm. right? Because I feel like it's setting yourself up. I feel, like, like, and I think, I think we have built in society this like unspoken notion that, you know, to have a really successful relationship, you have to tell your partner everything. Mm. That's just what people, that's what just women and men sometimes believe mm. that like, you know, come to me all the time, yeah. come to me, tell me everything, I can take it. Like, you don't actually know mm. what you can take in capacity. Mm. Like, you think that's what you'd want as your partner, they tell you everything. If something happens, it comes to me first. I don't want, like, I don't want you telling your friends. For, like, there's been relationships and there are current relationships now where you might hear people say, like, why'd your best friend know before me? Mm. And it's like, what is this entitlement where it's like, I... Oh, you, yeah. my comfort before my breath. Like, how are you to tell me how and what capacity I'm supposed to be comfortable with you mm. versus a friend? Yeah. Right? Like, we had this, like, there's like this, I guess, expectation that a relationship or your partner now just supersedes all comfort levels of anything you built before. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's just what, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. now you and I are dating. We've been dating for two years, whatever. Mm. Whatever you're comfortable with, up until this point, now comes through me. Yeah. Okay. What do you like? Yeah. What are you talking about? How, like, what we have built is based on this level of comfort I have built with you in this time frame, or our relationship and our emotions and stuff. But it doesn't nullify my mm. current comfort levels to this point before knowing you. Yeah. So I think that is kind of hard to understand in in relationships because they feel like no, like I'm this person now. Like, mm. you can't just make yourself that person for my comfort. It, yeah. It, just because you're my girl or my man. Like, it, mm. it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It becomes this expectation because I'm this part of your life now, mm. I now should take your comfort. Yeah. You can't do that. I think, the <laughs> only, I think the only time something like that should ever happen where someone has an expectation is if you've given them that before. You know what I mean? Where mm. it's like if I've gone to you, gone to you, gone to you. And then stop. And then I just stop. Then I understand why someone has that expectation where they're like, what? Like, why why did you stop? Like, why now? Why now? Right. But if you start off from the jump, it's like, why are you not telling me these things? It's like, I might not just be comfortable yet. yet. It doesn't mean I don't love you. I'm not comfortable yet. Mm. Um, So it's it's, it's interesting. Very Mm. interesting. I think last thing we should talk about is the whole uh, (laughs) whole Don Cherry situation. Mm. I actually, because I saw someone... I saw someone bring this up, basically saying, like, do you think we're, do you think you should have got fired? Do you think we're too sensitive about the issue? Like, all this type of stuff. I have an opinion on it. I'd be curious to hear what you think regarding the whole situation. So, the Don Cherry situation, you can't avoid it. It's mm. on everywhere. It's, yeah. And I mean, it, you're, I mean, if you're, even if you're not a hockey fan, it just even want to compare it to anything else, any other sport, any other show, or, Mm. entertainment picture someone who's been part of something you're used to yeah. for years and years and years it's a familiar face and then they're gone 
Mm. Just that it doesn't matter what sport this is, yeah. right? It's a familiar face. You're used to him. Everyone loves him. Now he's fired because of something controversial. Mm. Okay. Now, the issue isn't even the getting fired part because the fired part only comes down to business. Yeah. Right? The, how did like, it affect their bottom line? You know what I mean? Th- like, like yeah. that's, like, we're, people are making this, you shouldn't have got fired. No, he had to get fired because mm-hmm. we have running a business. We're running the business. Yeah. Right now, there's a lot of stuff around you. Mm-hmm. You are bad for business. That's <laughs> yeah. that's just business, yeah. right? I'm not even talking. I'm not even talking about the fired part because mm. that just has to happen once you yeah. create attention. Like, yeah. I can't protect you mm. once. Like, I can't, right? No matter how, how much history you built, yeah. you're messing us up. Mm. You're, in in Lamin terms, you're you're effing up the money. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're affecting the bottom so line. Yeah, that's that's that. But in terms of what the situation is, it's like okay, you. He, he's trying to make a good point in a wrong and bigoted way, mm. right? He's, because what he's saying, regardless of the words, is he respects the troops, he respects the day, he respects the sacrifices so much that he's upset that people are not respecting the same way as him. Mm. That is what he's trying to get across, mm. right? What he said is what the issue is because when you use the term you people, which is not a term you should ever use whether you're talking about group people or you're talking about mm. anything because you people categorizes. Yeah. And based on historical ways and conversation, you people is a derogatory term, usually towards people of non-color. Like, mm. you people, like, mm. the rest of you. Yeah. Rather, not me, like, mm. you guys. Mm. The rest of you that you guys... And then he said something along the lines of you people come here, mm. which is another negative, mm. you know, avenue where it's like, People are coming here as if you own mm. this location of Canada where you determine who comes in. Like, we mean that you come here. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's a whole other thing. But I feel like the real issue is I don't think Don Cherry is aware, or maybe he is, I can't speak for him, but I don't think he's aware that what he's really saying is he's upset about people not having his ideology. Yeah. Right? Regardless of who they are. And what he's missing is the fact that the immigrants that he talks about, there were immigrants in the wars. Yeah. Like, oh. his notion and his point is basically stating that everyone who was in the war was white. Yeah. Like, I think... The, I think... The big issue here with Don is that, you know, I think he just, look, I think he just kind of overstayed himself on Coach's Corner because I think everything, I, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, I never really grew up watching a ton of hockey. Me neither. But when I watched any hockey game I saw that had Coach's Corner, I always found Don Cherry kind of annoying, mm. right? Just because I found him, like... And he lived in my neighborhood, too, mm. back in Mississauga. He just seemed like... I, okay, I had a conversation with some guys in my group chat who watch a lot of hockey, and they basically explained that they felt... And these were, like, hockey mainly fans, white dudes. Like hockey fans. Like hockey fans. These yeah. were mainly white dudes telling me this. And they were saying they felt like Don needed to go years ago because from a hockey perspective he was promoting a brand of hockey that didn't exist today. Like, mm. he was so... Like old-fashioned? Yeah, he was, like, so focused on old-fashioned hockey, whereas the game has gotten faster, and like, a little bit more physical. He's like, you know, and he, there were times where he was promoting... He was upset that there were rules in place to prevent players from getting concussions, like, these types of things. They're like, Don, like, you're stuck in the past mm. of the game. It's not cool. Like when I'm, if I'm watching hockey and I watch Coach's Corner, I want to understand what's going on. Today. You're telling me things that aren't relevant. Yeah. So from that perspective, you should go. Secondly, like over the years, there's been like a number of cases where he said like a bunch of xenophobic stuff on mm. air, right? Third, I can't remember which comedian it was, but they were talking about like you know when uh, it comes out when people say like racist or xenophobic things on air. And it's usually, like, really, 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 like, old white dudes. And this guy was just basically saying that, look, like, it's, it's kind of on brand mm. for some of them, right? Because 
unfortunately, like they grew up in a time where that was normal, mm. right? And just because I have uh, empathy for something doesn't mean I uh, respect or like I understand it. Right. So in this case, it's like I can understand, or sorry, I can I have empathy for why he is saying the things that he is saying because. If I'm a logical person, based on his, based on his, yeah, like I can understand makeup, <laughs> makeup, like I, I understand all these things. The problem is, it's like, it's a different time now, Don. You know what I mean? It's like, people are more aware of things that are and aren't okay to say. Mm-hmm. And if you're gonna be like a, a Figure. big personality <laughs> on TV, like, you don't have to watch hockey to know who Don Cherry is. Right. Like, he's the dude that wears these funky suits. You know what I mean? Like. If you're going to be a figure, you need to be more aware of the things that you're saying on TV, you know? So And accountable. You, you got to be accountable for it. So to your point, it's like, yeah, he, all he wanted to, re- I think if I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, he wanted to get across that he cares about the troops in the country so much that he just wishes everyone else cared about it the same way we do, mm-hmm. right? My problem is when he says, like, you know, when he says, like, the you people comments, it... It's not so much you people. It's the fact that it implies that there are people that come to this country that aren't doing anything for this country. Mm-hmm. You know like what the, I mean? He, like, he said, even said the line about you take our milk and honey, you enjoy our resources. But it's like there are pl- <laughs> like there the, there are plenty yeah. of people that come to this country, and not just people of color. Like you know what I mean? Like you could be you could be an immigrant from Europe. You could be like, you know, Italian, Portuguese. You mm-hmm. could be an immigrant from Africa. You could be anywhere, right? And you come to this country, you're an immigrant. And you contribute to this country. And I don't, it just comes across like, re, it's like really sad to see, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because it made me feel some type of way when it's like, yo, there are people who come to this country regardless of their color and they do a lot of things for this country mm-hmm. and you put people in this box. You make them feel like, look, if you're I'm you're not, a superior Canadian. Yeah, like if I'm not born, bred, and my family history is not Canadian, you're not, you're not no matter what I do, I'm I'm just gonna be like an other to you. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that's that's the problem. And, and to you, who yeah. are you? You know what I mean? To so, deem this. So it's funny. Yeah. Like when I when I saw what Don was saying, I never I didn't have this feeling where I was just like he needs to get fired. No. Like he needs to get rid of yeah. him. I'm outraged. He needs to get fired. So when people ask, like, are we too sensitive? Like, I understand why some people say that, but I'm sorry. Like, him getting fired doesn't blow me away because you're affecting, (laughs) Don, you're affecting CBC's bottom line. They can't have that. I understand business. It makes sense. And it's like, look, times have changed, and you you have not changed for a long time. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see where things go. And the thing is, it, it takes... It takes a thing like this, like, hey, let's be honest. <laughs> there's people that they put in jail. There's people that they, you know, reprimand. There's people that, you know, get fined. Sometimes just to make an example out of, yeah. right? And it happens to people of color many times where there are certain things that, you know, happen that they do, might be equal things, yeah, and they might get a harsher sentence or a harsher treatment. Um, so I feel like this also was somewhat of a statement of maybe even equality mm. where no one really expected Don to ever get fired. Mm. And I think they're like, we have an opportunity right now to really show that this isn't tolerated, period. The problem is... You know what I'm saying? He... he I don't, truthfully, I didn't think he was going to get fired, right? I, but the, I didn't. But, I but didn't. The, reason he, I, the reason I think he did is because they asked him, to, they asked him, like, they had a conversation with him. To apologize. To apologize. And he's like, I don't want to apologize. Right. And then the dude went on, like, Fox. He went on, like, Fox Oh, and News. put that lady. And he, like, doubled down on it, right? So it's like, okay, you kind of put CBC in a tough position here, you know? It's like, I think if you have your own ideals, it's... Like, yes, sometimes you should stick to them. But if it's clear that it's affecting a lot of people, you, it becomes a problem when you're like, you know what, I don't care that it's affecting you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to double but down. But like, okay, like, you, the very least you could do is like, look, you he could have reiterated his point. 
differently. Differently. And said, like, all I was trying to get across is I care about this country so much. I just wish more people cared. I'm sorry that I, it came across mm -hmm. this way. He wasn't even willing to do that. That right. was. That, that's the problem. Which that's means the problem. you're okay with that. Yeah. So. Anyway, that's the perfect place to yeah. end the podcast. We'll make a post. Say in the podcast. Oh, the TV show. Hey, I'm sorry, the TV chill show. Chill with that P word. <laughs> relax. Hey. The TV hey, show. My you, fault. Relax. My fault. Relax. This ain't no podcast. Yeah. But yeah, thank you guys always for stopping by and checking us out. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure. Um, it's Saturday night. Um, a week from today, I will be having my first um, pop-up event. Um, called Thank You for Your Eyes. Yeah. Um, if you guys are in the local area or downtown, um, just search Thank You for Your Eyes on Eventbrite and mm. it should come up. But um, I'm really excited for that. I'm going to be showing some of my work over the year. I'm going to have some vendors, some food from friends, some caterers, some DJs that are my friends be popping in. I have some, you know, gifts and merchandise. Mm. It's going to be it's gonna be a really good event. I'm really excited. A lot of preparation going into it, but um, it's just another you know, way to, to give back and, and just kind of share these chapters with you guys. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's a great feeling. Thank you guys for, you know, supporting us, supporting WTT. Um, as always, we're going to put this online. Yep. Um, we have our best snippets. Keep sharing it. Keep coming in. Keep telling your friends. And um, until next episode, thank you guys for watching. Peace. See ya. We need to talk. 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 We need to talk.